they said that they do believe that, the, that there were militants northbound of here. Now, they say the soldier is sorry, but most importantly is that the soldier will not face any criminal consequences. The military advocate general of the Israeli military says that's because they do not believe he deliberately fired his weapons towards a non-combatant. The Israeli military has concluded its investigation into the shooting death of an Al Jazeera journalist by the name of Shireen Abu Akleh. Palestinian journalist who was wearing a vest that indicated that she was press was shot and killed. There was one shot to the head that killed her. And in the beginning, there was an attempt by the IDF to blame Palestinians for her death. But after an immense amount of pressure and after an investigation by CNN, which was actually a pretty good investigation, it became pretty clear that a member of the IDF was actually responsible for this. And so the outcome of this investigation is that the IDF says, yeah, it's actually pretty likely that we did it. But the person who did it isn't gonna suffer any consequences for it. Here's more on that. It's been nearly four months since Shireen Abu Akli was killed while covering that Israeli military operation in the West Bank. And this IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces investigation, essentially comes to the same conclusion that several investigations, including CNN's own, has come to. And I'll read to you from part of this report. They say it appears that it is not possible to unequivocally determine the source of the gunfire which hit and killed Ms. Abu Akli. However, there is a high possibility that Ms. Abu Akli was accidentally hit by IDF gunfire fired towards suspects identified as armed Palestinian gunmen during an exchange of fire. Now what the IDF says is that they believe that it was a soldier in an armored military vehicle who had a limited range of sight and was south of where Shireen Abu Akhle was standing who fired that fatal shot. Now they say that the soldier had no idea that he was firing towards journalists and thought he was firing towards Palestinian militants who were firing at the soldiers. This despite the fact that it's very clear in the images and videos we've seen that Shireen Abu Akhle was wearing a protective vest and helmet that clearly says press on the front and back. And CNN's own investigation did not find evidence of militants in the exact vicinity where she was standing. So understand the excuses that the IDF provided for the shooting death of this Al Jazeera journalist. Oh Well, you know, the vision or the view of the IDF soldier was obstructed and they couldn't tell that she was a journalist except she was wearing a vest that said press both on the front and the back. They also claimed that there were enemy combatants shooting at IDF soldiers at the time. And CNN's investigation indicated that that was not the case. And so all of these excuses were meant to provide cover for the soldier who opened fire and killed this journalist. So he he or she doesn't have to face or suffer any consequences for it, any criminal consequences for it. But in reality, look, they're just excuses that are easily debunked. and. Regardless, the IDF had no interest, and the Israeli military, uh, Israeli government had no interest in ensuring that justice would be served in this case, especially considering the first reaction they had to this story was, it wasn't us, it was the Palestinians, when there was absolutely no, no evidence indicating that was the case. Yeah, uh, let me be super clear, uh, Israel's lying. Uh, so people are so reluctant to say that, why? Well, you give uh, governments, all governments, Way too much credibility, as if like, well, I mean, the government wouldn't lie. Yes, it would. It lies all the time. U.S. government lies all the time. Saudi government, Israeli government, Turkish government, Russian government. You name a government, they lie. They lie 24/7. So why are we treating them with any credibility? This should be dismissed as the joke that it obviously is. Look, even the official was like kind of winking and nodding throughout. Like, haha, we murdered her, who cares? We're like Mohammed bin Salman and we're gonna get away with it. They said, hey, there didn't seem to be any militants near her. He's like. Well, maybe not right next to her, but there could have been some around. I mean, why don't you just slap us across the face while you're at it? That's like saying, oh, of course, a sniper hit her and hit her in the neck right between her protective equipment below and above, right? There's no militants anywhere near her. And the official reporting is saying it's not our fault. Says, ah, oh, well, you know, there weren't any militants next to her, but maybe a couple of miles away. <laughs> and he says, oh, we shot her in the back. So we can see that she was a journalist. You think that's a good excuse? We, what, we shot a random Palestinian in the back. We never thought a, a, a second about it. We didn't hesitate at all murdering that Palestinian. Oh, It turns out it's a Palestinian and by the way, an American citizen journalist mm-hmm. that said press on her back. Right. Right. But hey, we just thought we were murdering a normal Palestinian and their lives don't matter at all. That's why we shot her in the back. 
The official says, the official says, okay? So, uh, look guys, can it, I, can Israel has uh, murdered her just like the Saudis murdered Khashoggi. And they didn't dismember her, but Khashoggi and her were both dead, so it doesn't really matter either way. But the difference is America covers for the Saudis, doesn't punish them at all, but says bad boys. I cannot believe you did that. In this case, they're like, "Oh, Israel shot and killed her." Well, we were trying to even lie for them and say maybe maybe they didn't. Okay. Yeah. Now that they've admitted that they killed her, we believe them a hundred percent that it was a pure accident. And the kids, the guy who shot her, says he's sorry. What else do you want? And besides, was she was just a no good Palestinian American citizen. Okay. So uh, one piece of pessimism. And then we'll end with one piece of optimism, believe right. it or not, coming from me. Um, so the pessimism comes, or my pessimistic commentary comes in regard to what Al Jazeera wants in terms of a separate investigation. And I, I think that what they're calling for is crazy, considering how biased the US government is when it comes to Israel and its treatment of Palestinians. Al Jazeera condemned the IDF investigation, saying the delay of more than 100 days since the shooting is intended to evade the criminal responsibility it bears for the killing of Shireen Abu Akleh. And they called for an independent investigation to be done by the United States. But an investigation by the United States will yield the exact same results. They have no interest in, first of all, Ensuring that there is consequences, there are consequences for the IDF soldier who opened fire and killed this clearly labeled press member of the press, right? So that's the pessimistic stuff. But the optimism is, did you ever think there would be a day that CNN of all places would do a robust investigation into the Israeli Defense Forces and their killing of an Al Jazeera journalist. Now, normally I have the optimist on the show, and that is fantastic. And you see us criticize mainstream media all the time, but we also give them credit when credit is due, and they did a fantastic investigation here at CNN. See, we have no agenda. You give us a great report that actually tells us the truth and proves something wonderful, great journalism. If you did that all the time, I would praise CNN no to no end. But even though I'm the resident optimist, I'm gonna turn to one of our members here on Twitch for a bit of pessimism on that exact issue. Uh, they said, uh, Nate Dog XX wrote in, they'll probably be fired now since CNN is turning right wing. That's and I, true. And I, I mean, hadn't thought of that. Yeah. And he makes a, unfortunately, he makes a great point. Uh oh, the actual journalist at CNN that did that brilliant reporting that was so conclusive that even Israel has to, had to admit that they were half lying. Their job is probably in great danger as we speak now, because the right wing has taken over CNN. Their owner is a Republican, yep. and he's already fired two people for telling the truth on air. So it's and he's trying to send a message: you better not do anything but kiss right wing Republican ass. And in this case, the right wing in Israel likes to be able to kill Palestinians and keep them in an open air prison for decades on end and treat them as subhuman. So that's what the agenda will be going forward, and I'm scared of that. And then another member, by the way, made, by the way, made a great point. Ian Kuhn wrote in: "There's no such thing as an accidental long-range headshot." By the way, I'll add from a sniper. It was a sniper. He didn't accidentally miss by hundreds of feet or miles, since there wasn't wasn't militants in the area for miles. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.